Hi, welcome to the screencast for the Topic 8 test. <clears throat> so looking at question number one, it says, an aqueous solution of which of the following reacts with magnesium metal? And so what I've written here is a magnesium metal plus an acid. Remember, this is MASH. It should give you a salt plus H2. So if you look at the equations here, ammonia is NH3. It's one of those that IB kind of expects you to realize. And ammonia, remember, NH3 tends to form bases. Hydrogen chloride is HCl, so that will react with magnesium metal. Potassium hydroxide, KOH, um, magnesium have to be more reactive than the potassium. It may or may not be, but, you know, it's a metal there. And then sodium hydrogen carbonate, again, it's already got sodium in it. So magnesium is more reactive than either of these metals. So B is really the only one that would clearly react. And this should have been a pretty easy one because we've done magnesium and hydrogen chloride together a number of times in the laboratory setting. Number two, this one gave some people uh, trouble, and it really shouldn't have. It wasn't as difficult as it appeared. It tells you that you have aqueous XO4, 3 minus. It doesn't matter what um, is attached to it. You've, it's a polyatomic ion. It's aqueous, so the positive metal has fallen off. It doesn't matter what it is. The X doesn't really matter either. They're going to ask you to figure it out later, but you know that overall it has a minus 3 charge. It's definitely a negative ion. It's going to form a solid precipitate. That's what precipitate means with aqueous silver ion. So you've got an ionic compound, Ag plus, and XO4, 3 minus. So it says write a balanced equation for this. Well, you should be able to put together that an ionic compound with Ag plus 1 and XO4, 3 minus is going to have to be Ag3, XO4. So that on your reactant side, you just have to show the two ions that are coming together. This is just a net ionic equation. And as far as including your um, state symbols, the AG on each side, and I should have included my S here, my solid on my, the other side, because they told me it was a precipitate. And then part B, B1, calculate the amount in moles of AG plus used in the reaction well, they told me I had 41.18 centimeters cubed. Okay, that's 0.04118 liters. It's concentration of 0 0.2040 moles per decimeter cubed. That just means moles per liter. So I just multiply them. And that cancels my liters out, leaving me with 0 0.008401 moles. And a number of you did have this one right, which was good to see. And then carrying that over, calculate the amount in moles of the precipitate formed. Well, I have to go back to my balanced equation. I know my moles of Ag, okay, 0 0.008401. And when I look at my equation, I see that I get one mole of the product for every three moles of the Ag. So I have to take it times the molar ratio to convert this to moles of Ag3XO4. Number three then wants to know the molar mass. This one, I was a little disappointed how many people had this one wrong. You were told that the mass of the precipitate is 1.172 grams. You just figured out how many moles you had. And even if you did this wrong, you should have taken your answer from part two and divided it by the mass you were given because that's all molar mass is, the grams in one mole. Take your grams, divide by your moles. There it is, 418.6 grams per mole. And then it says determine the relative atomic mass of X and identify the element. I've got one mistake here. Um, my relative atomic mass, I know I've got XO4 minus 3, and I know that I have um, AG3 on the front of this. So there's my 3 AG. Here's my unknown X. Here's my uh, 4 oxygen. And this mass is actually 387.61. And then the way I determine um, how much X weighs is I take the 418.6 from up above and subtract that, and I get 31, which is very close to 30.99, depending upon where you round things off. And when you look that up, that would be phosphorus as the unknown. And phosphorus wouldn't have been a bad guess since... Um, PO4, SO4, those are the common ones we see on the common ionic chart. Moving on to number three, the pH of a solution of solution X is 1,000. 
that of Y is 2, which statement is correct about the hydrogen ion concentration? Well, it's one unit of pH, so that's a factor of 10, since it's an exponent in the base 10 system. And they want to know X compared to Y. Since X is the 1, X is stronger, so X is 10 times that in Y or D, or Y is 1 tenth. The half has no place in it because pH goes in units of 10. When the following one molar solutions are listed in increasing order of pH, so lowest first is going to be your strongest acid, your strongest base should have the highest pH. So looking at these four, what I've done is identify each of the substances given as a strong acid, weak acid, weak base, or strong base, and list them in that order because that would take you from lowest to highest, and that corresponds with A. And again, HNO3, H2SO4, HCl, those are your three strong acids. And as far as strong bases, it's a balink, barium, lithium, sodium, and potassium hydroxide. Number five, the equilibrium reached when ethanoic acid, and here it is, and you can find it in your data booklet as well, but ethanoic acid is one they use frequently, and in fact, I think you have to come up with the formula later in this test. When it's added to water, it can be represented by the following equation. So you can see one hydrogen um, dissociates, but because it's given with the double arrows, it's only partially dissociated. Define the terms bronzed lowry acid and Lewis base. Identify two examples of each of these species in the equation. So bronzed lowry acid is a proton or hydrogen donor. And the CH3COOH donates its hydrogen. And in the reverse reaction, the H3O plus donates its uh, hydrogen. The Lewis base is an electron pair donor. And anything that's a bronsted lowry acid or bronsted lowry base will still be considered a base under the Lewis definition. So it's an electron pair donor, and you can just go ahead and identify the bases um, using the bronsted lowry definition if you want, and that would be H2O and CH3COO minus. Number six, which change in H plus causes the biggest increase in pH? So A. A change in H plus from 10 to the minus third to 10 to the minus second, that's a change of 10. B is also a change of 10. C and D each appear to be a change of 100, which they are. But if you look carefully, you see that C is actually going to increase or decrease the pH because you've got to go from 10 to the minus fourth to 10 to the minus second, whereas D, you go from 10 to the minus fourth to 10 to the minus sixth. So D would have the biggest effect on increasing your pH. Number seven wants to know which species are a conjugate pair according to the Bronsted-Lowry theory. A, it's lost, um, it appears to have lost an H, but really what it's done is it's reshuffled it and put the CHO differently, and what's been lost is an oxygen, not a hydrogen. NH3 and BF3 uh, would make a Lewis acid base pair, but not a Bronsted Lowry conjugate pair. H2NO3 is lost 2H, so that doesn't qualify either. So only D qualifies because H2SO4 gives up one hydrogen, forming HSO4, which would then be its conjugate base. Number eight, the pH values of three acidic solutions, X, Y, and Z, are shown. And so what you should notice is with the pH of 2, HCl is a strong acid and it's more concentrated. If HCl has a pH of 4, um, it just means it's less concentrated because HCl is always a strong acid. It's just apparently been put in more water. And then CH3COOH is a weak acid and it must be fairly concentrated to have a pH of 4. And if I watered it down, then I expect the pH to be closer to 6. So solutions X and Z have the same acid concentration um, explained by reference to both acids why they have different pH values. That would be because X is a strong acid and releases all of its H+. Plus. So for example, if they were both one molar, H+, plus would have a lower pH because it's going to release all the H plus ions, whereas the CHCO, CH3COOH will only dissociate partially. And then two, deduce by what factor the values of H plus in solutions X and Y differ. 
Since it's a difference of two pH units, that would be a factor of 100. Number 9A, a solution of hydrochloric acid, it's 0.1 molar, and it's diluted by a factor of 100. Determine the concentration and pH value. So um, a unit of 10, a factor of 10 changes it. So a factor of 100, if I divide 10 into 100, that means it changed by two pH units from 1 to 3. The 0 0.10 moles per decimeter cubed, if that's diluted by 100, I can just divide by the 100 and I get 0 0.001. Um, that's one way to do part A1. A2, explain why 0.1 molar ethanoic acid and the dilute solution have similar H plus values because even though ethanoic acid is 0.1 molar, it only partially dissociates. So the dilute HCl would have fewer H pluses in it even though it's fully dissociated. We've spread it out more. And B, suggest one method other than measuring pH. You could look at reaction rate. It would be more vigorous with the stronger acid. You could look at conductivity. It would be greater conductivity with the stronger acid. Or you could neutralize it with a base, and you would see the stronger acid would have a greater temperature change during that neutralization reaction. Number 10, solutions of hydrochloric and ethanoic acid of the same concentration reacted completely with 5 grams of calcium carbonate in separate containers. So they both reacted completely. And A says the CH3COOH reacted slower because it has a lower pH than HCl. That's not true. It has a higher pH. It's the weaker acid. A smaller volume of CO2 was produced with CH3COOH than with HCl. That's not true either. If it reacted completely with both, the CO2 should be the same. It's just going to be much slower with the CH3COOH. And then a greater volume of CO2 was produced that's not true either. Um, it's going to be the same volume either way because they both completely reacted. The 5 grams was my limited reactant. So the correct choice would be D. The same volume of CO2 would be produced. What would be different would be the reaction rate with the strong and weak acid, which is one way to tell them apart. And number 11, what is the conjugate base of the HSO4? So that means HSO4 minus has to be an acid, so it needs to donate a hydrogen, which would leave SO4 2 minus as the conjugate base.